I want to welcome you all to our circuit Sunday service. As you will see, today we're going to have a different kind of service. I would call it a visual service. In other words, the word of God will not be preached as usual, but hopefully be looked at through images, dance and music. Some of the young people who attended Reverend Cloudy's international camp are taking part in this service. If any of them should watch this, of course, we warmly welcome them. In the last local preachers meeting, it was felt that it's important to experiment with our worship with new and creative ways. So we hope that you will have a positive reaction to this service. The topic we are looking at is also very challenging for many people, and we will refer to the theme of it in an inclusive way, in order that the church can be inclusive and at the same time we can lead, lead our personal lives. Not all of you may be familiar with the topic of transsexuality, that is going to be the topic that we are going to be looking at in our time together today. Now, let us have a moment of silence and then pray. Almighty God, creator and upholder of all things, help us to open our heart and make us with your Holy Spirit ready to understand the message that we will see and listen to. May we all feel that we are your sons and daughters. Lord, take from our heart that hatred which judges others by their gender, their sexual orientation, the colour of their skin, and condemns others for the class of their families, so that love may rule and justice and solidarity prevail to the benefit of all, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to quote a Bible verse for us right now. This is in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. It has been called the Gospel in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. If the Bible says God has so loved the world, who gives us, who gives the human beings the right to divide the world in categories, who gives us the right to judge who is acceptable to God or not, in according to our mentality and personal way to think, God is not like us, who divides the world in good and bad, in beautiful and ugly, in educated and not, in rich and poor, in heterosexual, homosexual, transsexual, black, white. The word of God is an extraordinary word without distinction that unites. The world of God does not divide. Instead, it breaks down the walls and builds bridges of love and solidarity. My name is McCall. We are going to focus on the theme of discrimination and diversity. We will look in particular at transsexuality today. You are not all familiar with the term, but you will understand more going through this visual service. Christine's letter might help to understand. My name is Christine. I found myself very unhappy during my childhood and I could not figure out why straight away. I did not like playing with all the boys on my streets, but I did love looking at my mum and my sister putting on makeup and getting ready to go out with their lovely dresses. My friend was called Jane. She was my best friend. I loved her way to move, to talk, to walk and to dress. She was lovely. Most of all, I loved her long blonde hair we spent many days of our childhood and teenage age playing and going out together. I hated the second Friday of each month when my mum took me to the barbers to have a short haircut with a lot among with these men. The best memories I had were the sleepovers of my friends in our house. I was just unhappy at that time, but I did not know why. Later on, I spent days, nights, months trying to read the sadness until I discovered that it was connected with the image of myself. 
I could not look at my image in the mirror without feeling a heavy weight like a stone in my stomach. One day after a shower, facing a big mirror at my sister's house in the summer 2018, I had a clear rejection of my body. I understood clearly that despite what it was taught to me, that if you are born as a boy, you die as a boy, I felt that this was not true. I was born as a boy, but I felt as a woman. My gender identity was opposite to the sex I was or I was identified at birth. I felt so bad thinking about my parents that always told me that it was against the Bible to be gay. So I could not understand or I could not imagine how they would react about my awareness. I wondered myself how God would look at me from now on. I had a long walk after that afternoon, many thoughts all confused. So many memories of my past feelings came back to me, to my mind. I suddenly understood so much about myself. Now I knew why so much suffering was happening. Why so many tears even if I was already over 40 years old. I knew I needed to tell someone about this. I needed some help. I called Jane, my best friend, and I opened my heart to her. She looked at me in silence. I was afraid she would not understand. That was an infinite silence. Suddenly Jane hugged me in tears and she did not let me go. She squeezed me so tightly she hurt me. I started to cry as well, and we did not say anything. Those gestures mean everything. The day after she brought me to her minister, who loved her and trusted her very much. Attending her, I discovered how much God loved me, how much she suffered, how much he suffered with me, how much he supported me. This is the end of the story of pain, a story that ended followed by a new one, full of hope. I believe the Gospels teaching us that Jesus has a special attention for people that are judged because they are involved and discriminated. Jesus loves all as they are, and he welcomes all in their own condition. Elderly, foreign, black, gay, homeless, rich, destitute, Muslim, Jewish, or they all belonging to any confessions. Even in Revelation 21, the walls disappear. There are no doors, there are no boundaries at all. People are all together and God walks among them. In Revelation 21, there isn't the sun and the moon because everyone is equally lit by the light of the God. If we point our finger against some people only because they are born in a way we deem different from ours, and we believe they are strange and not normal from our God, from, at God's eyes, I believe this means Jesus came in vain. Hi, my name is Leo. I took part of Claudia's camp as well as the others. I would like to present Claudia's pictures where we can see Christine's story. This, as the full service, want to be a visual message different from a meditation done only with words. Christine is the lady that Claudia met in Sheffield a few years ago. When Claudia met her the first time, she was still physically a man. She was not operated to become a woman yet. She went through a lot of suffering and was discriminated against as well by her family and at work. Even now, she finds hard to get a job and she has to live with benefits. I want to say that a transsexual, like everyone else, wakes up in the morning, cooks, sings, has memories, feelings, but a transsexual might go through a difficult stage of his or life to do his or her coming up as it happened to Christine.
let us pray. Lord, help us to be free, free to profess our faith, free to wear what we want, free to walk openly, free to go out without being discriminated against, free to love whoever we want. Help us, Lord, to take position and not to join the crowd. Help us to always love ourselves and our differences. Help us not to be ashamed of the things that make us original, but to turn them into strength and expression of ourselves. Lord, may we learn to love one another as you taught us. In your name, Amen. These puppets are Claudius' creation. Don't you think that variety and diversity are a richness for our earth? Dear friends, I know this was meant to be only uh, a visual service, but actually there is an experience of mine that I really would like to share with you today. When my mom was the minister in a church that was half Valdensian or Reformed and half Methodist in Naples, she created a group of people that met every first Thursday of the month. I had the chance to meet them in those weekends when I went back home from Rome where I was studying uh, theology. This was mainly a group of students. One day my mom was called by a cut to the group of gay and transsexual people who was looking for a church that would welcome them. My mom talked to the congregation, but she also asked the students if they wanted to join with this new group. And the answer was very positive. In fact, they answered with a lot of enthusiasm. 
The peculiarity of this group was that they became very united. They met not only during those monthly meeting, but very much outside of it during the week. They met to go to the cinema, they had lovely walks by the sea, they spent lovely evenings together. The first meetings in church were focused on the listening to the experiences of those who wanted to share their own story, especially the story of suffering. In this group, they were not only gay and transsexual, but also a disabled and a boy with autism. From this group, everybody learned the ecumenical communion, the interest for the life of the other, to help where it was possible, to listen, to share, and to share feelings, especially and emotions, and also the discovery to be able to take each other the weight of the other. But the most important thing learned in this group, staying together, was the need to pray together and to help the other to take himself or herself out so that there was no need to hide with the fear to be judged in a negative way. But all discovered the freedom to be themselves, all sons and daughters of God. Later, they had Bible studies and they analyzed also theological books and talked about it, about them together. If before they met only monthly, afterwards they started to meet once a week and later even twice a week. They shared tea and coffee and biscuits in the beginning until one day my mom, the minister, cooked spaghetti for all and they end up having fantastic dinners where everybody could share something. Why, dear brothers and sisters, I'm telling you this story. Why, I am sharing this experience with you because this group called itself the little kingdom of God. The little kingdom of God, where they lived fellowship, joy and sharing, and where everybody felt to be loved in his own condition and not judged, because like this is the kingdom of God. Hello everybody, this is Adriano. I met Reverend Claudia Lupi four years ago in a Methodist center called Ecumene. Since then, I have always followed her wherever she leads summer international camps in different Protestant youth centers in Italy. During the last camp, I took part to a dance workshop where I played the role of the transsexual with another English boy that you know. At first, I haven't understood Claudia's aim until I did it. That workshop involves a role play where being in the shoes of somebody else, or in my case a transsexual lady, made me feel what discrimination really is, how bad is to be humiliated, not accepted for what you are. You will notice from the dance that there is also a couple of lesbians, a gypsy, a Jew, a black person, all people that can be marginalized. Claudia testimonies how much God loves everyone and accepts everyone in his air condition. God is not able to discriminate as we do. Playing the part of the transsexual broadened my mind. I understood the real importance of welcoming everybody. Now, I'd like you to see our performance. This workshop touches many themes like diversity, discrimination, violence and more.
biggest boss and I've been a trillis. I'm a bigger problem when I click with Skrillex. Murder on my mind, it's time to pray to God. My revolver's not religious, the revolution's born. You want to know my name, then go and tell us all. You want to know my game, suicide squad. Pistol on my waist, I might make a mistake. Forgive me for my wrongs, I have just begun. Ain't, ain't no mercy, ain't, ain't, ain't no mercy. Huh. Got that purple Lamborghini, purple Lamborghini lurking. They tell me what to wear, how to look, what I should say, how I should be. You gotta be sexy, you gotta be cute, you gotta be nice. I lost sight of who I was. I listened to opinions of people. And I tried to change who I am. Because I thought that others would accept me for it. And I realized I don't know how to be anything but myself. Figuring out what types of friends you have, you are who you surround yourself with. Hold on to me, don't let me go Who cares what they see, who cares what they know Your first name is free, last name is dumb But you still believe in where we're from Faith beyond categories. I am me, but does the world see? Divided by my race, my colour, my look, I'm put into a box just waiting to be shook. Categories, subcategories, which one of these fits? Throw these words at me until one of them sticks. I am me, but does God see? Does God see past what others cannot? Am I welcomed in? Am I accepted or not? 
Does it matter what I wear, how I dress, or if I swear? Does it matter who I date or who I have as my best mate? I am me. But does God see? I am me. But does the world see? If I'm Jake or if I'm Jan, if I don't identify as a man, or is it okay to come as I am? Am I too small, too tall, not good enough at all? I am me. But does God see? My faith builds boundaries. My faith goes beyond labels. I want to be a person who God enables to share the love that he bore for the world, not having hurtful, hateful words that are hurled. I am me. But does God see? The word of God does not divide. So my friends, let's try and come alongside those who are different, those who feel alone. Surely our faith should be a place we call home. I am me. But does God see? Categories, subcategories, which one of these fits? Throw these words at me until one of them sticks. I am me. And yes, God does see.